lessons learned on the film. Um, but for, as far as we go, um, you know, we got to turn the page pretty quickly. We have a huge game at home next weekend uh, against Furman to, to try to win an outright conference championship. And I think that's, you know, that's a little bit of the story here. Is this these games usually aren't this late in the year with with different things on the line. But um, you know, again, all in all, really proud of our young men for their effort. Um, I'm proud of how they prepared. Uh, they strained all week. They they were locked in. Um, I didn't think there was any any gaps in the preparation or anything like that. I thought just from a first half standpoint, um, you know, I thought our young quarterback really played well. I mean, he was he was 13 of 15 at halftime, I believe, and uh, you know, the one interception was a heck of a play by number four. But um, I thought Witt really made great decisions today. I thought he he got the ball out quickly. Had, a, had an unbelievable touch touchdown pass there with, with, with good touch to um, to Kendall and uh, Kendall made a great one hand to grab and then uh, you know just a few few missed opportunities we got to do a better job with uh, backside ball security uh, credit to Alabama's defense and, and their pursuit uh, got the ball out from behind a few times um, and obviously those were big critical plays in the game so um, with that I'll open it up for any questions. Yeah, I think just um, again, I think demeanor is really important, right? And and it we're it's a very fine line of like, we knew we were up against it today. We knew we had to play really good, sound, clean football to be in the football game. And um, I don't want to take away their preparation and their effort because they did a great job with that. But we'd also don't want to be super excited about a loss, right? And I, I think just me having that measured moment, but then understanding just how quickly. The great thing about kids today is, man, they forget. You know, I'll dwell on something for three weeks, and they'll it'll be done for them probably by the time they get on the bus. But um, we got to quickly move on, just from a mindset standpoint, to to the work that needs to be done. But we'll evaluate the film and learn, be hypercritical, and go from there. Coach, I think I saw that Mercer is going to play at Auburn next year. But long term, do you think Power Conference games versus FCS is going to be just something that disappears? I don't know. I, you know, I, I don't have any insight. I think at some point, this is just me being very speculative, but I, I think at some point you're going to see that power four completely detach. I don't know if you'll still get some of these regional crossover games. Um, I do think it's a great opportunity, right? Like a lot of our kids grew up wanting to play SEC football uh, or play at Alabama and, and to have an opportunity to play against the best and put it on the line, I, I think is an important factor in their overall experience in college. Um, but I, I don't know what the direction will go. I, we enjoy the opportunity each year, I can tell you that. Uh, just as a follow-up, I, I know you're not the AD, but from a budget standpoint, how damaging would it be if, the, if that kind of game disappeared from Mercer's end of it? Yeah, I mean, it's, it'd be devastating. I mean, it's just you see you see his team shift, right, his team's posture for playoffs and whatnot. I think you're seeing more and more folks um, take a little bit bigger chance on some early season games against other Power Four teams. Um, you know, the SEC has done a good job, I believe, with, with continuing to schedule uh, some of these FCS schools, and I think that's a great thing. I do think it's a good opportunity. I think it's good regionally, um, and, and I'm happy for our kids. But, yeah, I mean, certainly, you know, whatever the payday was for whoever it is, it's still anytime they take something away, something's better than nothing is what my dad always used to tell me. So um, it'd, be a, it'd be a huge issue for us. Coach, in terms of everything still being in front of your team, what are the ways in which facing this kind of competition can help the team in that pursuit? Yeah, I, I, again, like I think you you have to find the small victories. Like all week, our big thing was listen. There's going to be you're going to have somewhere between 65 and 80, 80 opportunities to play as good as you can for four to six seconds. How many of those plays can we win and swing in our favor? You know, we talked about going into the into the week, I thought to have a chance in the game, I thought we had to limit our turnovers. I thought we had to generate some stops on defense, and I thought we would have to make a splash play in the special teams. And um, I thought we executed well on special teams today when we had the opportunity. Didn't quite have a chance for, for a splash play, but um, I do think we affected their punter with our punt rush. And, um, you know, again, I, I think that, um, you know, uh, there'll be lessons learned. Thank you all. I appreciate it. Wide receiver Kendall Harris. Caught a touchdown pass today. Kendall just 
just talk about your game today. How exciting was it for you to catch a touchdown pass in the game? Well, uh, today, honestly, um, obviously we lost, but I think it was a good experience for all of us and just being able to go out there and at least compete. I feel like we cut back on some of those turnovers and it's it's a different game and we were moving the ball, which is nice to see. And then obviously uh, the touchdown pass I caught, uh, that was a big moment for me. That was my first touchdown of the season. So that was, that was really nice. And it was a lot of fun to uh, go out there and be able to catch that and then be hyped up uh, by all my teammates and everything like that. So that, that was really nice. What were some of the other things about, about the, the game day experience at the SEC that you enjoyed today? You know, uh, honestly, like uh, Coach Jacobs was saying, being able to come in here and uh, be at a stadium in which, like, we all dream of playing in as kids, like, I think that was a really good experience. And uh, being able to actually contribute and be a part of it, because last year we went to Ole Miss and I wasn't really playing like that. and. Just being able to come in here and start and contribute and, and just like do good things and show good things on film, I think it's it's really good for all of us. The sun was up on this end, everybody's shadow is pointing this way. Mm -hmm. When you looked up for that touchdown pass, was the sun in your eye? Yeah, honestly the sun was like I didn't really see the ball until the last second to be honest. The sun was definitely in my eyes. When I when I looked up, I was I was kinda worried at first, I ain't gonna lie, because I couldn't see the ball and then it just kinda popped in the frame and during our uh Pat and goes um, uh, in pregame, I was able to kind of get a good feel of how like those balls would look in the stadium as well. So I think that really helped in that sense, uh, being able to kind of figure it out before the game to where the ball would land during the game. Was it like a look what I found kind of deal or what you felt like you were prepared for? Uh, honestly, I was, I was genuinely prepared for it. And in Pat and go, I – like not saying it in like any like cocky way or anything. Like I catch the ball one handed to practice things like that and be in scenarios like that. And today during like our pat and go and pregame, I didn't drop one. So honestly, I was feeling like really good about it before. And then it just it's kind of funny that it happened to be the day where I didn't drop anything and and I was feeling really good. Good. Thanks, Kevin. Yeah, thank you. Senior linebacker Isaac Dowling. He has played. Yeah, I think um, it was all right. I mean, I think a lot of their points uh, we gave them to gave them, you know, those possessions and everything. wasn't able to get off the field on third down a lot of times. You know, gave up deep balls and everything. So I, I think our focus and discipline wasn't there like we needed it to be because you know. Playing teams like this, they're going to expose that. So the mistakes we made, they scored off of that. So. What was different about this time here at Tuscaloosa versus the other time? Um, I think we hung in with them, you know, longer than we did last last time. I mean, I'm proud of the way the guys were moving. You know, the effort on the field. I think you know some drives, some possession. You know, hey, I think we're hanging in them for a little bit. But I think you know, I see the. Progression, and you know, I feel like we did better than last time. Senior leader on the team, what's going to be your message to your teammates ahead of the project next Saturday? Yeah, just get this out of our system. You know, we come back tomorrow. You know, correct the mistakes, and then you know, we look we look forward to the next one. You know, this is a big conference game for us coming up, so we're excited. You know, just refocusing on the main mission. That's the one uh, conference. So you know, we're going to get this out of the way. You know, fix our mistakes, and then come back ready to go tomorrow. Coach mentioned winning every play four to six seconds to give it everything you've got each time. Well, what goes into that mentality, and how does that help you guys? Uh, it just it just comes down to focus and discipline, and that starts in practice. You know, it starts with the practice habits. You know, you gotta uh, you know in order to play good on Saturdays. You know, it starts on Sunday, Monday, whenever it is. You have practice and also watching film. So just being disciplined, and consistent in what your technique is, your assignment and alignment. Thanks, Isaac. Thanks.